Hi first graders, it's Mrs. Peretta again. I'm so excited to do some more learning with you today. We're going to start off with a vowel team warm up. And yesterday you looked at that vowel team OO and how OO says ooh, like moon, soon, cartoon. Today we're going to look at OO and we're going to hear a different sound. So first, let's look at this picture here. Look here at the top. I see a, what do you think that is? You're right, it's a book. So if I look here at the word book, b -u -k, book, that o, o is making that u sound. Try it with me, ready? B -u -k, book. Read the word book. Good job. Let's try this one here. Say the picture. Now think in your brain, hmm, what am I gonna see in the middle of that word? You're right, o, o. What is it? Huck. Read it with me. Huck. Uh, huck. One more time. Huck. Uh, huck. You got it. Oh, here's a fun one. I've heard lots of you have been helping out with this job at home. What do you think that friend is doing? You're right. This friend likes to cook. So again, I see that O O. Uh, cook. You read it. Yeah, great job. All right. Oh no. What do you think this might be? Thinking of that uh sound. Uh huh. I think you might be right. Look there. There's a blend at the beginning of this word. Makes it a little bit trickier. Cur, uh, crook. This one by the picture might be a little bit harder to figure out, but once you see the word, I think that picture is going to make sense. Read it to me. You're right. Look. You can see these eyes can look all around. So, look, look. One more. Put that one a little bit closer so you can see. I'm thinking about what's right here, what we might call this. Give you a peek at the beginning of the word. Brr. Think of that. Uck. You got it, Brook. All right, so let's go through these words and take a peek here together. So OO is saying, uh. Ready? Book. Your turn. Yes. Hook. Your turn. Yeah. Cook. Your turn. Crook. You got it. Look. Your turn. Yes. And the last one. Brook. Awesome job. Okay. So I'm going to mix them up because I kind of did them in order that time. And this time, I want you to whisper read them to me. Okay. So I'm just going to hold it up and I'm going to give a little listen and I want to hear you whisper reading. Ready? First grade friends, here's what I want you to do. I want you to give me a looking good. Ready? Looking good. Nice job, first graders. Okay, we're ready now to dive into reading workshop. And this lesson is pretty, pretty fun if you ask me. Because I don't know about you, but when I'm listening to stories or when I'm reading stories, it's so exciting when that story starts to come to life and I can picture what's happening and I feel like I'm a part of the book. So what I want you to do is think about a time when you've been in school with your teacher. Maybe it was in kindergarten or a time in first grade. And I want you to think about a story that your teacher read 
that you could feel the story coming to life. You felt like you were part of the book. You felt like you were one of the characters in that adventure. And just because of the way your teacher was reading it, you were able to go on that adventure and become a part of the story and see those characters coming to life in front of you. Now, there is a way to figure out, how should I read this book? And that's our job today. So our big question today, boys and girls, is what can authors do? So what clues do authors give that readers can use to bring their characters to life? So we're looking for clues in our books that the authors, that the writers of those books have given us that tell us how that story wants to be read. How can we bring the characters to life? How can we make it exciting for you? And when you're reading it, how can you make it exciting for yourself? So let's take a peek here at some ideas together. So I have a little chart I made for us. It says clues that help readers know how to read. So yes, you know to read the words on the book, but this how, that's what we're talking about today. So if I lift up here, one of the first things we can look for is the punctuation at the end. So when you're reading in a book at the end of your sentences, you're always going to see punctuation marks. Those punctuation marks can tell you how you should be reading. So if I have a period at the end, I am reading, they're telling me something. I can just read in my regular voice. If I see an exclamation point, oh boy, there's some kind of big feeling happening there. Maybe it's excitement, maybe it's worry, but I know I have to use more feeling in my voice to read that part. And a question mark means I'm asking something, means that author wants you to use a questioning voice. And your voice kind of changes a little bit whenever you're asking questions. We'll see that later whenever we're reading together. So punctuation at the end. That's one clue that we can look out for in how to read. Punctuation in the middle. So if I move that a little bit closer, you're going to see when we're reading today in our book, sometimes you're going to see some punctuation in the middle of your sentences. This here is called a comma. When you see that, it wants you to take a little break, just kind of like a little breather before you keep reading. Here, this dot, dot, dot tells you that there's some time that's gone by. Kind of lets you know, uh-oh, there's a little break in time here before our story picks up again. Kind of adds some suspense, some excitement when you're reading. Here's another clue on how we should read. Special print. Ooh, and my first graders, I'm sure you remember, we've talked about this in class, about ways that the words look, and I bet the rest of you first graders, you know it too, because I know your teachers, and I know they've been working on this with you. So you look for the special print in your books. If the word is bold, you have to give that word some feeling. If it's italic, that means it kind of looks fancy. It kind of looks like it's slanted on the page or kind of looks like it's a little bit sideways. That's called italic. You need to read that a little bit differently. Or if it's all in capital letters, that word needs to be read in a different voice or with some feeling. So special print, bold, italic, capital. And also something that can help dialogue, boys and girls. So we talked about dialogue is when somebody in your story is talking. So two ways that we show that in a book, the author can show that is quotation marks. So whatever's in between these quotation marks means somebody is talking, somebody is saying something. And then we have these speech bubbles here. We see those a lot. Remember our elephant and piggy books? We see a lot of speech bubbles in our elephant and piggy books. And you're used to seeing quotation marks in our books like Zelda and Ivy. They are in there too. Also words like shouted, whispered. They help you know how I should read it. I'm not just going to say shouted. No, I'm going to say shouted Ivy or shouted Iris. Whispered use a whisper voice when I'm doing that character. So I could say, whispered Piggy or whispered Gerald. I have to use a whisper voice. And the last thing that we can use as a clue to help us know how to read is a picture. So you want to look at the pictures in your book and think about what the picture looks like. 
What are the characters doing? What are their facial expressions? What's happening around them in the picture? That will also help you to understand what's going on in the book and how your book wants to be read. So let's do a quick little review here. Let's fold all these down in our chart. Clues that help readers know how to read. Echo that back to me, ready? Clues that help readers know how to read. Punctuation at the end. Punctuation in the middle. Special print. Dialogue. Pictures. So all of those ways, all of those things in your books, all of those clues are ways that authors tell us how they want us to read their book, how they want their characters to sound, what they want their characters to be doing, or how their characters are to be feeling. So let's take a peek at a book here. I picked a book today called I Spy Fly Guy. I know a lot of first graders like Fly Guy books, so I thought this would be a fun one to use. So this story, I Spy Fly Guy, you're going to see some of the things that we talked about and that are going to help me know how I should read this story to you. I Spy Fly Guy. A boy had a pet fly. He named him Fly Guy. Fly Guy could say the boy's name. Buzz. Now, if you look closely, do you see here, there's a speech bubble and all capital letters, buzz. Chapter one. One day, Buzz and Fly Guy went outside. Let's play hide and seek, said Buzz. Well, I can tell Buzz is talking because here I can see quotation marks. And it says, said Buzz. Fly Guy hid in the garbage can. He always hid in the garbage can. He liked to eat while Buzz looked for him. I spy Fly Guy, said Buzz. It's my turn to hide. Buzz hid in the garden shed and shut the door. Notice how I changed my voice there. Why? Right here, there's an exclamation point. I spy Fly Guy, said Buzz. Fly Guy found a way in. Buzz! You are good, said Buzz. It's your turn to hide again. So there we can see there's another speech bubble. And here, notice how I made that word good really jump out. It's in all capital letters. Fly Guy hid in the garbage can again. Just then, the garbage man came. He dumped the garbage into the truck and drove away. Chapter two, Buzz's dad was going to work. Follow that truck, cried Buzz. The truck drove and drove and drove all the way to the town dump. Can you figure out why I changed my voice? You're right, right there, exclamation point. And the word cried. Buzz ran into the dump. Fly Guy, where are you? Fly Guy, he cried. Answer me. Take a peek there up close. Do you see the quotation marks? Do you see the exclamation point? A zillion flies all answered. Buzz. cried Buzz. They all can say my name. How will I find Fly Guy? Buzz spied a fly hiding. Do I spy Fly Guy? The fly flew away. Notice how I changed my voice a little bit when I was asking a question over here. When I said, do I spy Fly Guy? My voice kind of goes off a little bit, letting you know I'm asking something. Buzz spied a fly eating. Do I spy Fly Guy? The fly boinked him on the nose and flew away. Buzz spied a fly landing on his hand. Do I spy Fly Guy? 
The fly bit him and flew away. Chapter three. Buzz was sad. Was Fly Guy gone forever? He kicked a can. He kicked a jar. You can see there he's crying. I used the picture to help me know I need to use a sad voice on that page. Then Buzz remembered. They were still playing a game. Okay, Fly Guy, yelled Buzz. I give up. You win. He heard a voice from above. Buzz. I spy Fly Guy, cried Buzz. Notice, yes, there's an exclamation point, but look at that smile. So I read it with excitement, not sadness this time. And Fly Guy said, Buzz, lose. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that Fly Guy book. Fly Guy books are fun and they're silly and they have lots of dialogue, lots of those words that let us know how we should be reading it, like cried, shouted, yelled, it gave us some clues in the pictures. Like when we saw that Buzz was sad, we could see the tears, he was crying. We also could see those speech bubbles whenever the Fly, was to, fly Guy was talking and saying Buzz or Buzz lose. It was really neat being able to see those things. Also, we got to see the um, special print when it talked about having special print. Let's look here. We saw a word in all capital letters, that word good. Very neat. And a lot of the way through our story, we were able to see these different punctuation marks at the end. We saw periods, exclamation points. There were even some question marks I pointed out to you. And we used special print. So I feel like we used a lot of these clues here. If I go through it, we use punctuation at the end. We use special print. We definitely, all the way through this book, there was definitely a lot of dialogue going on and clue words like yelled or cried. And we definitely, definitely were looking at those pictures to help us figure out how to read those pages, especially that page where Buzz was sad when he couldn't find Fly Guy. So boys and girls, remember, today we practice O-O says uh, like book, crook, look, took, shook. And also we learned that in your reading, when you're looking at your book, the author lets you become an expert as you read by giving you clues to how they want you to read their book and how they want the characters to come to life. So remember, watch out for those clues as you read. Happy reading, first graders. I'll see you later.